Inside Football with Bud Wilkinson, head coach of the University of Oklahoma's football team. Fifteen minutes of fast-moving, exciting highlights of football. The people, its plays, and its problems. Brought to you by your National Guard, a strong force of citizen soldiers and airmen. On the ground and in the air, they serve with pride on America's first line of defense. And now, here's Bud Wilkinson. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you. You know, one of the most interesting plays to me in a football game is when it's fourth down and you know one of the teams is going to have to kick. When it's third down and long yardage, they usually try a pass, as this team did, and then you get that fourth down sure kick situation. Kicker got the ball away, but he outkicked his coverage and the safety man had an opportunity to catch it and start toward the sidelines. He picked up excellent blocking from his teammates Cut back to evade the safety man. And went all the way for the touchdown. Is that a planned play or is it spur of the moment? Well, Howard, the punt return is always a very well planned play. It takes a great deal of practice and it takes execution by the entire 11 men on the team. If you're gonna make a punt return go well, it involves first, rushing the kicker, second, delaying the coverage, and third, the ball carrier reaching the wall of blockers. If he can do that, and you get that all-important fourth point, the blocking pattern properly established, then you might run it back all the way for a touchdown. Well, evidently all four of those things happened on the play we saw. We'll see just how right after this word from the National Guard. Do you know that sound? That's a scramble bell. When it rings, pilots of your Air National Guard are in the air in minutes. As part of our nation's air defense team, units of your Air National Guard are on alert every day in the year. This is a proud force of citizen airmen, your friends and neighbors who give their time for your defense. During the Korean emergency, more than 45,000 officers and airmen of the Air National Guard served with the Air Force. Their readiness paid off. Today, when readiness is even more important, pilots and airmen of the Air National Guard are training in units throughout the nation. Many of these young men are acquiring valuable technical skills that will keep America's air defense strong. Yes, when you look at the job being done today, you will agree, it pays to keep your air guard up. But how can we see what happens on a punt return? Well, let's go to the little man and I think I can make it a great deal clearer. When you know that the team is going to have to kick the ball, the team that receives the kick has the opportunity to go into what we call a punt return formation. And that means get some people well back down the field. They know ahead of time that they're going to run it down this sideline or that they're going to bring it back down this sideline. And if it's coming to your side and you're playing in the line, your mission is to delay those people from coming down the field. You delay the coverage. And while that's happening, of course, the offside rush the kicker as hard as they possibly can in an attempt to get in front of him and block the kick if it's a bad snap from center. And if it's not, of course, they want him to kick quickly. Because if he has to kick the ball rapidly and these people have not had a chance to cover, the safety man will get the ball, be able to catch it, and be well under control as he starts to run down the field. As soon as the kick is off, the linemen all swing around and come back in what we call a blocking pattern along the corridor. The men who held up usually get downfield first, and the men who rushed swing around, and they also become part of the pattern which forms between the defensive team covering and the sidelines. The two defensive halfbacks try, of course, to protect the ball carrier as he moves toward that wall of blockers. And if he gets to the corridor and finds that blocking pattern, he has smooth sailing, and he sometimes can make it go all the way. Let's take another look at that play and see if we can watch the blocking develop. At the bottom of the picture, the arrow points to a defensive man holding up the offensive coverage. If the offensive linemen are delayed in getting downfield, and if the offside will rush the kicker hard enough so that he must kick quickly, the ball will be way down the field ahead of the men who are trying to cover. The quick kick and also the delayed coverage enable a safety man to catch the ball with no defenders around him. This gives him an opportunity to start toward the sidelines. 
And if he picks up a beautiful block, as this man did, he's now in the corridor where he has an opportunity to pick up the blocking pattern of his teammates. The key block is always at the corner, as the arrow indicates. As the runner moves down the sidelines, the corridor becomes clearly visible. The arrows point to beautiful blocking by the defensive linemen who have moved back down the field after delaying the coverage and rushing the kick. They make that lane for the ball carrier, and it's almost like running down a hallway. When you reach the end of the corridor, the safety man may be waiting for you, and it is now necessary for the ball carrier to move into the open field. The corridor widens, when you get to the last man. With a full head of steam, the ball carrier is able to cut past the safety man and move into the end zone for the touchdown. Now that you've seen the play develop, let's watch it one more time in normal motion so you can pick out the various elements of the puppy turn. The offside holds up, the kick is rushed. The defense does not have time to cover well and the ball carrier gets started toward the sideline. He's in the corridor, picks up the blocking pattern, evades the safety man, and makes it to the end zone for the touchdown. But I've been interested in why so many teams use the quick kick. <laughs> well, I guess the reason they do is because you might make 30 yards in the play, and football teams are always trying to make 30 yards on one single effort. Now, actually, I think that bears little explanation hard. Today, the offense in football is so potent that they're able to move the ball against almost any pattern of defense that you set up. And you need to utilize every single man on the defensive team if you hope to control the offense. In order to protect the quick kick, you must take one man, usually the safety man, and drop him back about 35 yards down the field. If he's back that far, he can usually handle the ball when it is kicked. But if he is back there, as you can see, the defensive pattern now is made up of only 10 men. And since you have an awfully hard time stopping the offensive team with 11, it's virtually impossible to stop them with 10. So most people prefer to keep the safety man up, and that enables the kick to go over the safety man's head and get a long roll, and then if their defense holds up, they probably have made 30 yards on the play. It's a very potent offensive weapon. Well, is a quick kick executed the same as a regular punt? Well, it's executed almost the same. But there is a little bit of difference. I think one of the teams that has done best with a quick kick are the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Let's go to Atlanta, Georgia, home of the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech, and also of Coca-Cola, and meet coach Bobby Dodd, head coach of the great Georgia Tech football team and one of the nicest men in football. Bobby, would you tell us about the quick kick? In waiting for the snap, the quick kicker stays low in normal position for a running play. He turns to his right, and takes his steps parallel to the line of scrimmage. The ball is held pointing up field, and the foot hits it on the rear third, giving it the end over end movement that makes for a good long roll. In this game against Southern Methodist, notice that Dickie Madison, one of our good fullbacks, gets his kick away in a hurry, low end over end and behind the safety man. Unless the other team anticipates your quick kick, there's usually no run back. This particular one came to rest on the three yard line, which is about all you can ask. Now let's just watch a couple of beautiful slow motion shots of Ken Owen executing the quick kick. Notice the tremendous whip in that hip and the full follow through. Again, it's the form that counts. The big secret in the success of the quick kick is aggressive forward blocking all along the line of scrimmage. There must be absolutely no penetration by defensive linemen if the kick is to be gotten off. We've used the quick kick a great deal at Georgia Tech, and it can be a mighty handy thing to you. Now here's a message from your National Guard. Awareness. Mobility. Speed. These are key words in football. In order to achieve this in our national defense, America must be on its toes. If you're between the ages of 17 and 25 and have a military obligation, you can fill it by joining your Army National Guard. You will receive valuable technical training while you build a proud career as a citizen soldier. If you are a veteran with a remaining service obligation, complete that obligation while serving with your Army National Guard in your own hometown unit. Remember, 
As a young man of 17 or over, or a veteran, there's a place for you in America's largest, readiest reserve force. Stop by your local National Guard Armory today and get the complete details. It pays in many ways to join the Army National Guard. Bud, we fans are always interested in what goes on at the dressing room at halftime. Well, I wish that I could confirm the hopes of all fiction writers that it was a very dramatic scene. But actually, the halftime in a modern football game is a period of rest and relaxation for the players themselves. And then the coaches, after discussing the strategy of the first half, go into the dressing room and talk to the players about how the second half will be played. In order to really bring you up to date on this, we took some pictures of our Oklahoma team between halves. The managers, before the half is over, bring orange juice on cold days, coffee or hot tea into the locker room and have it ready for the team when they come off the field at halftime. We also spread mats on the floor so that the players who are tired can actually lie down. The team comes into the locker room and as you can see, they're somewhat tired and bedraggled. Their first job is to cool off and to relax. If it's a hot day, of course, a cool drink always seems to help. Some of the boys who are a little more nervous than others don't like to drink anything between halves, but by and large, it's a cool drink on a hot day and a hot drink on a cold day. After stretching out, the players discuss between themselves the things that have happened in the first half. The scout, who sits in the press box analyzing the plays, has come down just before the half ended to the locker room with his halftime charts. These halftime charts merely list the offensive plays of our team and the gains that we have made each time that we have run the play. As you can see, some of the plays have not been used at all, others have not worked too well, and some of them have gained quite well. After we have gone through the charts, we as coaches move into the locker room and talk to our team about the mistakes that we have made during the first half of play. We hope that they are well rested and able to give us careful attention. We then diagram on the blackboard the plans that we have for improving our play in the second half. After the head coach is done talking to the team, the assistant coaches take over. This is Gomer Jones, our great line coach at Oklahoma, talking to our defensive linemen about a new pattern of play which they will use during the second half. Again, he has rapt attention. The diagram indicates what each man should do. The team then leaves the dressing room and starts on the field for the second half. We hope as they go out the ramp into the stadium, they will carefully read the sign above the door. No pep talk? Well, actually, before we go out on the field to start the second half, we remind our team that they ought to play as well as they're capable. But as a matter of honest fact, unless we've practiced well enough, it's going to be impossible for us to play well. Practice is the only means by which a team can become champions. If you practice well, you can meet the intense fire of competition. It's been a pleasure to be with you. Inside Football features Bud Wilkinson and Howard Newman. Executive producer, Ned Hockman. Produced at Southwest Film Center. Inside Football is brought to you as a public service in support of your National Guard. Inside Football with Bud Wilkinson, head coach of the University of Oklahoma's football team. Fifteen minutes of fast-moving, exciting highlights of football. The people, its plays, and its problems. Brought to you by your National Guard, a strong force of citizen soldiers and airmen. On the ground and in the air, they serve with pride on America's first line of defense. And now, here's Bud Wilkinson. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you. Then you might run it back all the way for a touchdown. Well, evidently all four of those things happened on the play we saw. We'll see just how right after this word from the National Guard.
Do you know that sound? That's a scramble bell. When it rings, pilots of your Air National Guard are in the air in minutes. As part of our nation's air defense team, units of your Air National Guard are on alert every day in the year. This is a proud force of citizen airmen. And went all the way for the touchdown. Is that a planned play or is it spur of the moment? Well, Howard, a punt return is always a very well-planned play. It takes a great deal of practice, and it takes execution by the entire 11 men on the team. If you're going to make a punt return go well, it involves, first, rushing the kicker, second, delaying the coverage, and third, the ball carrier reaching the wall of blockers. If he can do that, and you get that all-important fourth point, the blocking pattern properly established. Your friends and neighbors who give their time for your defense. During the Korean emergency, more than 45,000 officers and airmen of the Air National Guard served with the Air Force. Their readiness paid off. Today, when readiness is even more important, pilots and airmen of the Air National Guard are training in units throughout the nation. Many of these young men are acquiring valuable technical skills that will keep America's air defense strong. Yes, when you look at the job being done today, you will agree. It you know, one of the most interesting plays to me in a football game is when it's fourth down and you know one of the teams is going to have to kick. When it's third down and long yardage, they usually try a pass, as this team did, and then you get that fourth down, sure kick situation. Kicker got the ball away, but he outkicked his coverage and the safety man had an opportunity to catch it and start toward the sidelines. He picked up excellent blocking from his teammates, cut back to evade the safety man, 